I'm going to try and get this bar out of the way so we can then reach our hand up there and see exactly what socket we need on the bottom of that tap. But this is all right. <coughs> That's probably scuffed that idea a little bit because I've just tried to undo that. And as you can see, you probably see it better this side. The waste has snapped here. Other now, I'm quite concerned how it's going to come out. <coughs> <laughs> what a pain. I just don't want to break the basin. Nothing's ever easy, is it? Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. We are back to jobbing around in this video. It's been a while since I've done a little jobbing around reactive plumbing video. It tends to have been the bathrooms or biggish jobs that I've got going on at the minute with the extension and stuff like that, and a lot of press fit content. A lot of people seem to be enjoying the press fit content. It is still massively dividing people. But yeah, this video is a jobbing video. We've got, um, from memory, got a toilet, a basin, uh, and another toilet in my mate's house. But yeah, these can be your bread and butter jobs. What I tend to do is try and lump loads of little jobs together over a period of a couple of days. You can earn decent money from it. Um, I also did um, take off a couple of rads for some decorators that I do some work for. In fact, I need to film them because every time I go and do that job, I just go in, get it done and get it out because it's so quick. But I suppose people who want to see that, by some systems... If the valves aren't shutting off, you've got to drop the top off the system. Yeah, I know. I mentally note that, and I'll do a video on um, taking rads off for decorators and stuff like that. That'd be a good one. Uh, right, enough waffle from me. Let's get on with it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, drop me a comment below, and I will catch you all on the next one. So this is the culprit, the second toilet in Matt's house. I've had to sort out, and it is leaking. I don't know if you can make it out. Just ever so slightly there. So what we're gonna do is fairly straightforward, just whip this ball valve out and put the new one in. However, if you look down there, you can see the edge of the body of this ball valve is just underneath that siphon. So I'm hoping when we get it disconnected from there, it's gonna slide out. If not, we could be in for a little bit of a, a mess around with the siphon, but let's get it undone. Let's get the water off, get it undone and uh, see where we're at. But yeah, it's definitely passing quite a bit. It's not what you want. So, as always, just turn the water off. And then give it a flush. Water stopped. And I've got the Aquavac there to just drain out everything to the bottom of the system. But to start with, we will disconnect the feed off it. Like so. I would hazard a guess it's thread, cross-threaded that at some point because it looks like there's some tape and everything on there. But we'll get this undone, we'll get the nut on, undone on the bottom and we'll try and get that valve out from the top. So I've emptied the cistern, got the Aquavac on it, pulled the water out of the cistern. So get the nut off the bottom. Like so, and now, So now with the nut off the bottom, you can see it is just catching the side of that siphon. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that out. Um, what I'm gonna try and do is ease that siphon that way ever so slightly and just see if we can get the tip of that out. If not, I'm gonna cut the bottom off there and it should slide out a little bit easier. But then we're gonna struggle getting the other one in possibly but let's get it out as best we can and see what we can do so i've just pushed the side of that siphon across ever so slightly trying to not move it within the system to see if i could push the body of it across and i managed to just slide that out the side which is going to be a big help but you can see 
where they've put putty or plumbers mate or something because it's still not set completely on around it but let's take that out put it just in there for now but yeah look you can see just how the edge of it was pushing against the bottom of that siphon so we'll give that a clean up and hopefully we can get the Dudley one in the same way as that one come out and I think we're going to get the bottom of that Dudley one in because it's just not quite as bulbous as what the bottom of that one is I think we're just going to be able to get that in and uh, slide it underneath that siphon so I've adjusted the height to it as always with these Thomas Dudley ones you can just alter it there and then screw out your float to exactly where you need it so let's see we can get that in yeah there we go so that's going to sit in perfectly there the float's been adjusted to it's going to sit just on top of that siphon and we can get well you can even see the, the bottom of that brass body is going to sit there perfectly so we'll get a nut on the bottom get it all tightened in and hopefully it's going to be as straightforward as that interesting one this is the end of the bit that you've just seen was the week prior to me filming this and i just cut the video off at the end because this toilet all of a sudden became a bit of a pain and i'll show you why if you look at the lid here it's not sitting down now when i fitted this last week i put the valve in and didn't even notice that the back of the pan at uh, the back of the system here sits flush with that little lip on the lid so when we went to put the we've done it all working fine put the lid on and it just wouldn't sit down like that so i literally went sod it turn the water off set them back the customer it's not a problem i'll go and get an adjustable one i'll come back next week and fit it i had loads to do so picked up an adjustable hydroflow telescopic float valve so we're going to whip this one out which is exactly the same as that but not the adjustable one so hopefully this one being the adjustable we can drop it down it is literally 15 mil 10 mil if that just to get that bit down under there so get the water off we'll drain it out with the uh, aquavac and get that one on but it's just niggly little things toilets can be such a pain you'll know from the toilet i've done last week or the week before a simple job of doing a ball valve in a toilet has got so many different variants that can cause a bit of an issue so we get it drained down you get that one out there you go that's the new telescopic one in as i said the other one was just catching the lip of the lid and it did my head in so we've popped back a week later and there you go lid sits perfect on there now flush is fine brass bottom brass tail on it job done so it's currently friday and we're back to doing some little jobbing jobs jobbing around jobs little jobs where you're in out and to be honest i quite enjoy doing that every sort of two or three weeks i try and lump a load of little jobbing jobs together i've done two this morning i didn't bother filming them one of them was just whipping some radiators off the wall for a decorator and the other one was going to look at a job. Didn't bother filming them, but now we're at a mate's house who is, and we're for a mate for a while, we're at a mate's house who's currently on holiday, left me the keys and said, I've got a couple of issues with my toilet and my sink. Can you go and sort it out when I'm on holiday? So yeah, this one is push buttons broke, but as you will see inside, the siphon's bust. I picked a new one of them up. And this one is, the taps are absolutely knackered. It won't move round. Tap, hot tap won't come on. It's got, I hate these taps with the plungers that do the waste. So we're gonna get rid of that, take the waste out. But as you will know, when you come to do jobs like this, it's all about getting the pedestal out of the way to be able to change the waste. So hopefully, I can't see it yet, hopefully it should just unbolt from the wall. We'll cut the back of the silicon, ease it off slightly move the pedestal and be able to get to that waste so we can get rid of that but for now we're going to concentrate getting the siphon swap is going to be hopefully the easiest siphon swap you will have seen because 
I got the customer to send me a picture of exactly what siphon is in there for a complete swap. Usually I put a Thomas Dudley one in, I'd change that for a Thomas Dudley, that for a Thomas Dudley, but for this one, they are at some point gonna have a new bathroom put in, so it's just a case of making it work and getting it getting it usable. So, I've ordered the replacement one, it's here. We'll get this switched out. It should be literally a 20 second job. So we've unpackaged the new, I can never pronounce it, right, Ryquin, Requin, Ryquin, however you pronounce it. We've got the replacement on for that, because as I said, the customer showed me what we had in there. So we've also got to replace the push button. So we'll whoop the push button out of the lid in a minute, but first of all, we'll get the new one clipped in. So if we just take it out of the cradle, that is the actual body that we're gonna swap in place for the one that's in there. So if we flush it, it will take the water out right down to the bottom. We'll be able to unclip that one out straight away and pop the new one in. So by lifting that up, we flushed it. It's going to start filling back up. It's only going to take seconds to just twist that one out like so. Pop it in the basin. Twist the new one in. Like so. That's it, job done. We'll just now make sure it fills up to the height we want it, which to be fair, is pretty much preset on there. No longer got it running through there, because I'm sure if we look at the washer, it's gonna be, yeah, you can see it here, look. See the, so if we look at the washer, you can see the bubble on the bottom. They just pitter over a time and they hold water in it. You can see it there and that's what stops it from sealing. You'll have it on the bottom as well there. Yeah, there's a bit there. You'll have it on the bottom, there's a lump there. But yeah, that's what stops it from sealing. So we just let this one fill up and uh, give it a test. Switch the button out for the new one and get it back on. There we go, we're all good. That's shut off, so we just clip the button onto there. Pop that on there. Give it a test. Perfect, straightforward, dead easy swap. Sometimes, you know, as I said, I usually swap it for Thomas Dudley internals and valve. Bathroom's coming out at some point, and that was just a quick fix, cheap fix. We've got that done. And there is the one we've taken out. So, it's always best sometimes, I find, if you can get the customer send you a picture of what they've got internally on the on the cistern or what taps they've got or what waste they've got it just saves that little bit of you know faffing around if you've got to go off and get bits at least with pictures you can pre-order them or go to your merchant see if they've got them in stock makes life a whole lot easier this is next taps coming out and we've got to take the waste out as well which which could possibly be a bit of a pain but let's move this out of the way clear a space and get this tap taken out and replaced with a little cave it one again not massively expensive but it's just it's going to work better than that one that doesn't even work at all so we're coming to change the tap isolation valves down here we can turn the tap off that's not a problem i've whipped the first screw out of this side on the right i've undone the screw on the left we've whipped that out and luckily for us we've got a very little bit of movement in the base and that means we're going to be able to lift this up pull this pedestal out slightly and get to the waste. That's always the issue with these, because sometimes if there's no movement in the basin, you can't pull the pedestal out and you can't get to the waste inside, and it becomes a bit of a pain then. We get the water off, we're gonna have to get the Neurad Tapex kit up there, undo the tap, and then we'll ease the pedestal forward and get this waste changed. So what I always do with this is this part of the basin, I'll put my shoulder just onto that there, ease it up ever so slightly, and just pull that forward and then rest uh, rest the basin on the edge of the ped like that get to the valves and get to the waste we can whip this out but yeah i hate these lever wastes really really do they're nasty things um the only time you really fit them now is on like victorian style bathrooms so yeah, we'll bin this one off. We've got a push button waste on this one, on the new one that's going in. It comes supplied with the tap, which is always handy. 
So let's get the Neurad Tap X kit, whip these taps out, get this waste off, and get it swapped out. So I'm going to try and get this bar out of the way so we can then reach our hand up there and see exactly what um, socket we need on the bottom of that tap. But this is right. <coughs> oh, okay. That's probably scuppered that idea a little bit because I've just tried to undo that. And as you can see, you probably see it better this side. The waste has snapped here. It was coming out anyway, but it's just snapped along the top there. I'm just trying to undo that. So let's get that out of the way first, and then we can uh, get up to the, the bottom of the tap with the Neurad Tapex kit, as if that's just come straight off. Could have ended up using the basin and that just shearing off, then they'd have had water coming through the ceiling downstairs. Because you'll see it when I take it out. Just how brittle, <laughs> it's just fell off. Just how brittle that is. I'm trying now to get this bar off. Oh, here we go, is that pulling off? So yeah, look at that, it's just sheared off straight from the bottom of the waist. However now, I'm quite concerned how it's going to come out. I was going to do the tap first, but we're going to have to try and somehow get that to come out. Because the body on these, this bit, is what holds these waists in, so I might have to just cut that out a little bit. Let me have a fiddle around and see how we're going to get that out. Might be the trusty old chisel. Ah, oh, there we go. Unless it's spinning the old lot. No, I think we should be able to get it out with this. Right, let me get this out some way, shape or form. I'll leave the camera running there, see if it can pick it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a pain. I just don't want to break the basin. Oh, I'm actually cutting for the ear as well now. Oh. Nothing it's ever easy, is it? <sighs> hmm. Right, multi-tool time. The way that waste is corroded, I think it will go through pretty straightforward. We're just going to cut the bottom off it and get the waste out. There we go. So, in theory, if it's not too hot, should be able to just lift that out. Just like that. So yeah, we'll get this cleaned up. As you can see, it's pretty manky. We'll get this cleaned up, get the waste set in it, and then do the job that I was planning on doing first, sorting the tap out. So we've got the waste cleaned up, dried up inside the basin, and it's cleaned up. That's going to come out the way when the tap comes out. We've cleaned it up there, I'll just give it another little white round. As always, I silicon my waste up. I know there are various different things you can put into basins, the basin mates and plumbers mate and whatever, but I always use silicon, never had a problem with it, so I stick to exactly what I know. So we'll bang some silicon, some white silicon around, I always put it just around the edge here, like so, just going to wipe it off anyway, put plenty on like that, drop that into the basin, like so, and then I'll put a little ring underneath here where it bonds onto the basin, like so.
and then I always put a tiny little bit around the nut for where it goes on. I don't use the washers, never have done. I say it's all my personal preference. And we can get this tightened in. So you get that tight, I get my fingers wiped off. Get that tightened in, get it all set, get the silicone wiped off, and then we can concentrate on getting the tap switched out. So with the waist in now, we can get the tap out. I've got the, what size is it? 11 mil, 11 mil socket on here. I've just tested it up there to see if it works. Now I'll connect it onto the Murad Tapex kit. If you haven't seen these before, they are an absolute godsend with anything to do with taps, bath taps, basin taps, kitchen taps. It's got a ratchet on the bottom here. You've got an extendable bar there, extension bar there. And then the top bit is on a complete knuckle, so it doesn't matter where the fitting is or the bolt is, you're going to be able to get to it. So we'll fire this up here onto the bolt. It just makes life so much easier. They are expensive, I think about 130 odd quid, but again, it's one of those things that, there you go, it's one of those things that once you've used them once, you completely understand why people rave on about them. Um, yeah, great bit of kit, probably one of the best bits of kit I've bought to be honest. So we get that out, get it disconnected off these flexes and put the new tap in. Right, I've got the new tap made up now, I've got the tails made into it, got the threaded bar into it. So we'll pop this up into the basin, feed the tail through as we do and then drop that down and then again with the Neurad Tapex kit we'll just get these on. We'll get the washer and the plate on and the bolt into position. Just finger tight up onto the bottom of the tap. People don't realise. You know, you do stuff with your eyes closed. You know, when you can feel what you've got to do, that seems to be one of the main things in doing these taps is that is you can sort of see exactly what you're doing without seeing it. The feeling for where that threaded bar is, where that nut's going. There we go. So we get that up there, finger tight, then we'll get the Tapex kit back onto it. If I can do it. And get it tightened up. Yeah, perfect. Honestly, they're just so easy. That bar. Yes, you can use the little basin socket set spanners, the long spanners. But if you are doing a lot of them, just treat yourself to a Tapex kit. Honestly, they are worth it. They're weight in gold. So that's the tap in. We'll connect the tails back on and then we'll go have a coffee, let that set and give it a test in a minute. Right, there we go. Tap on, working. I've left the pedestal out so we can just test that little bit of pipe work. Silicon's gone off, everything is all good and proper there. And the toilet's now working. Give it a bit of a flush, the button works, it's not passing anymore, job done. As I say, little job in jobs, I quite enjoy them, having a Friday, bobbing around, here, there and everywhere, getting little jobs like this done. So yeah, got another jobbing day. Yeah.